if there's something strange in your neighborhood, we're going to call. That's Ghostbusters. Enjoy this intro before the start of the review. What is up, you guys? Welcome to another episode of Jake's Movie Reviews. I'm Jake. I'm Josh. Yeah. I know this. <laughs> and today we are going to be talking and reviewing uh, Ghostbusters <laughs> after life. And before we start talking about it, I I just want to take like a few a few minutes uh, because this movie is a tribute to Harold Ramis. So let's take a few minutes to uh just honor him and uh yeah and yesterday was his was his birthday oh yeah oh. yeah so what what a good what a good way to release a ghostbusters movie on uh harold Dreams' birthday they they finally did they finally did something right all right, let let's let's stop being sad. Let's let's do this review. Let, at least it's not. Hey, hey, Josh. Just at least let's just be glad it's not. It's not like Ghostbusters twenty sixteen because it's because it's not. Oh. It's not. Yeah. Uh, so. Yep. Yeah. So there's a lot in this movie, and I don't think we're gonna spoil everything. I hope. I hope. I hope not. But the how this movie starts out, we get like a flashback of like a. A big on like Spangler and and the house which uh the new the new people have to relocate to because um something happened you know so, something happens with like the like the overdue it's like the overdue like bills like I hate that like when you can't pay your like the bills uh, and Cat Callie played by uh was it Carrie Coon who's also proxy mm-hmm. <coughs> midnight in the uh, Avengers of Benny War. Um, and uh, we also get a character named Trevor, played by Finn Wolfhard, who you might know him as uh, uh, Mike Mike Wheeler. I was 
trying to trying to see if I get his last name right because it's been a while since I've seen Stranger, Which Stranger Things. Things character is he? Hmm, I remember. <laughs> yeah, Mike Mike Wheeler. I know what character he is, but yeah, like, I, I, I was <laughs> there's a lot of them. <laughs> that I, I might have got I sure. might have would have gotten his last name wrong. And we get uh McKenna Grace as uh, as Phoebe. So Phoebe is in into science and uh Trevor is really like in the cars. You'll you'll see him like watch like a, a, a video of like a car like just like running and yeah I'm, I'm not gonna i'm not gonna explain like what their first like appearance is because you guys can go see the movie to find out like how they first interact um so basically when they move to the house um everyone calls calls everyone in the town calls it like the old like farmers was the old farm farmer's house the old farmhouse that's, yeah. that's what they because they didn't really well, they did know they did know about Ingon uh, Spengler, but you know Phoebe was really discovering stuff about her her grandpa that she didn't she didn't know about. And Trevor, Trevor, Trevor wasn't discovering stuff. He just wants to find like a like good Wi Fi. He wants to try and get get a bar because <laughs> they're we're basically they're now living in the middle middle of nowhere, basically just like in a in a farm. You know, it's like get get good reception, um, and then uh, so we get this we get this diner. So they they go to a diner because I guess like why don't they go grocery shopping in this? That's what I I've been wondering. It's like why can't is there a scene where they're gonna go grocery shopping? No, no, there isn't. So they go to a diner, Spinner's Diner. It's like what what a good name for a diner. Just like huh, I wonder. I'm just gonna call it Spinner's. There, that's a good name, Spinners. Almost looks like uh reminds me of In and Out. I've been when I keep seeing that place in the movie, it's always been reminding me of In and Out because it's almost like you know, like an like an eighties diner. Yeah, or even like Corvette Diner because yeah. Corvette Diner kind of does or, the or, same or, sort or of Corvette thing. Diner, that that too. We're about yeah. Corvette Diner. Um, Basically for the seventies. Trevor meets uh, a girl that he likes named uh, Lucky, another another new character, um, and he applies for a job uh, at the diner. He's like, hey, can I work here? And she's like, I don't know. How, how old are you? So he basically, in the movie, basically he lies about being 17, but he's actually 15 years old. He's actually 15. So you'll, you'll find that out. He's 15. He's young. He's young. It's like, that's that's still that's still minor age like for a job like that that that's still the age of a minor um and um yeah so phoebe is it is it summer even though it's called somerville i feel i feel like it's still like summer school is it yeah yeah it's it, weird because i don't know this <laughs> is it's weird yeah yeah summer, i mean i don't know some place in Someplace in Oklahoma. I don't know if it's a real Some city or not. Oklahoma. I don't even. I don't know if it's a. I feel like it's a fictional place, but I don't even know if it is an actual real town. But they probably mm-hmm. they probably used like this this like fictional town. It's like we're we're gonna call it Summersville just for the movie. So so then um we go we go to summer school, which I'm surprised that we we don't see Trevor like going to school. It's like. Okay, is Trevor a dropout or is it is it just I I don't know. So he he works while Phoebe goes to school and Phoebe, who's literally, literally just a science like dork, uh, and all she she does is tell like science humor and science jokes. And Trevor's advice is to Phoebe is like is like you know. Try try and make a friend, or I I know you're not gonna make a friend. It's like what what good advice is that? You're the big brother. You're the role model. You should give like more better advice to your little sister than just that. Um, try to make friends. <laughs> there, go get get out, make make friends. Um, so and then we meet. Uh, actually, Carrie Coon meets. Sexiest man alive of this year, Paul Rudd, who is is uh is named uh, Mr. Gruberman in this movie, Gary Gruberman, who who is the, the the summer school teacher, 
And all, all he does, he doesn't actually teach. All he does is play like old movies for the kids. It's like, I, I know, exactly. I know the, the board is supposed to make you learn stuff, but I'm, I'm, I'm a cool guy. So let, let me show you, let me show you this cool movie. Let me show you this movie called Cujo about a devil dog. I'm sure your kids like that. Your kids will like that. Well, he's the summer school teacher. He is so teacher. obviously he's not going to enjoy his job. He's just going to, you know, hey kids, here's something for you. You know, here you go. Yeah. Don't bother watching anything. You just come in and, you know, standard American educational system stuff. <laughs> you know. Went, went from Cujo. <clears throat> what's, so he goes from Cujo to Child's Play, which is, that's a, it's still an interesting like way to go in horror movies. It's like this man has taste. <laughs> he got, he's got. To, I mean, I've he got, has taste. I've seen in like the play. I haven't seen Cujo. I don't even know if I can handle like Cujo. But yeah, he's got he's got taste in horror. Um, then we meet this this kid who uh likes like podcasting, and his name is Podcast. And literally, he reminded me of uh, Freddie Benson for my Carly podcast. Who's, uh, who's played by Logan Kim. Um, and he tries to become uh, friends with uh, with Phoebe. And she's kind of weirded out about it a bit, but then she gets like right into it, kind of. Um, and what's weird is they, they like, they leave in the middle of the day. I'm like, they didn't even, so school's over. It's like, I, I don't get it. You're going to, you're going to go out now. It's like, I, if you do that, it's like the teachers are going to yell at you if you're if that young age. But if you're, I remember when I was in high school, like if you go out, like some people like care, some people don't don't care, you know. But I I don't I don't know. They didn't. I feel like there was a scene, like a school scene from the trailer that they got rid of in this movie. I feel like the where uh, Phoebe gets like bullied. That was not in the movie. That that one scene. Hmm with the you know with the chips so i'm wondering uh, if that uh, ended up on the blu-ray hmm. or the dv special features police scenes yeah. yeah i don't know either um yeah but then they find this old like uh it's like old old thing which is like about like the like the dev devil dog it's like it's the devil dog or uh, yeah that's yeah. Uh, you know he, I mean, basically, if you go into this movie thinking it's going to be like radically different than the first movie, I mean, there's there are certain moments in this that are actually there's a lot of moments in this that are literally ripped straight from the first movie. Yeah, there like, there is <laughs> there is a lot of tones from the 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 1984 original, like more more than um, um Ghostbusters 2016. Yeah, you, you know. It's just I I love this movie. I love its its story and uh literally, literally so Trevor I this is like one of my favorite parts in the movie and we we went to season forty X and oh my god he finds the Acto one and he starts like taking a joyride which I think was one of my favorite like parts like in the movie and literally he's doing that and Phoebe is discovering uh the Ghostbusters like gadgets and. You'll you'll find Easter eggs from the from the first movie with like uh with the the library with like the, the books they <laughs> they're so specific and I love it I know <laughs> like and it I and know. some of them are just like background shots and it's like <laughs> and you can and you would only get them if you've actually seen the first movie <laughs> yeah but Jason Ryman he has done a really good you know look looking over his father's shoulder you know throughout the years you know ivan ryman who directed the first two you know mm -hmm. father like son this movie was as great as that so like this this sequel as is has done really great the hell are you looking at get get out of here go go get out of here yeah so this movie was better than Ghostbusters 2016. I'll tell you that. It's way, way better. Way better story. The only thing I don't like... I mean, no disrespect to uh, Melissa McCarthy, Kristen Wiig, or uh, Kate McKinnon, or Leslie Jones, 
or or any of them. It just it just was a good story, and they didn't they didn't treat the OGs that well in the 2016 version, you know. And I feel like they were trying to create like another universe and just you know living on to like the the franchise, you know. It just like re it was like let's let's just reboot this shit like right right now. But no, this this movie. This movie like brings us it's like this is like the next generation like a Ghostbusters. It's like we went from like adults and now now we're getting like kid Ghostbusters. That's basically the tone like for this movie. Um, and oh, there is one person when they when they get the ghost scenes. There's one one ghost, and it's J.K. Simmons. I'm like, Jake, and Josh is like, is that J.K. Simmons? And, and I'm like, like. That is. I'm like, J.K. Simmons, you should be right there about Spider-Man. What are you doing in this movie? <laughs> so I when I went, when I got home from Ghostbusters, or it was the day after, so I didn't I didn't know this. So his character is actually from the 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 video game. So I don't even know if he was actually in the first movie. So his character was referenced in the first movie. He's yeah. actually a very big oh, reference in the okay. first movie. But He's actually he's from the video game. Eh. Yeah, can't say anything outside of that. If you've seen the first movie, if you've played the games, you'll probably guess most likely who he's playing. I don't know if we get it or not. Um, Olivia mm. Wilde. <clears throat> um, Olivia Wilde is also in it, but it's not her voice. She's uh, it's um, she plays a ghost, but not saying who it is. Find, find <laughs> just watch. It's just again. Just watch it. Find out, find out when you say when you see the movie. So Emma Portner um, uh, does does the voice, but find find out who that is when you go go see the movie. Find out because I'm not I'm not saying it here. I was not expecting her at all being this. That that was that was <clears throat> I was a surprise. Let's uh now there is a scene like there's a. Near the end, but with shows like the OG, but where I'm not going to say the whole whole thing, but just just how they use Bill Murray, uh, Ernie Hudson, and uh, Dan Aykroyd, and of course they they did they did shine some light and um, Harold Ramis, even though you know he's he's passed on, they still they still shed some light on his, him and his sequel. It was it was so so good. Oh yeah, and I can't forget about Ann, like Annie Potts. And, um, mm-hmm. Oh yeah, there's two there's two post credit scenes, so don't don't leave those seats. You know, after mm. like after they play Ghostbusters and the the Andy Christ. That yeah yeah because I think what's interesting about them is the fact that the first one I mean well okay so the first one is just like a little you know funny what's to you thing it, it's funny it's another little like jab at the first movie kind of it's right. it's funny <laughs> it is funny and then the, the second one. I actually found really intriguing. It was the second one was very wholesome, but I found it intriguing at the same time because not only is it like a nice little like cap on, you know, the legacy that the three of them have collectively left or, you know, or or I guess the four of them, the originals. I mean, not only is is it that, but it also actually builds up and, kind of has a really nice payoff in terms of how this could progress forward because I had actually thought about it earlier that day in the sense that I was actually the the concept that they introduced I actually like was considering I was like whoa they read my mind yeah it's like this we like this would be a great idea. Oh wow they actually did present this idea. The the message can't say what it is but you know the whole message in in this movie it's it's like uh it's it's like it's okay to get into a little trouble and it's and it's and it's like and it's and it's okay to relive relive the past and you know think think about like what what happened you know the ghostbusters the og it's like it's it's like it's good to think about the ogs and bring bring them back especially for this um for this movie and uh yeah, I, I want to talk about the other the other ghosts because uh, I uh, comment down below who's who's your favorite ghost because uh, Josh and I we're gonna say our our favorite ghosts in a minute. But so there was another 
another ghost that was kind of like there was no Slimer in this movie, which I I kind of was I was wondering why didn't they put Slimer? But there was a ghost that kind of looked like Slimer. His name was Muncher, and uh, he was played by Josh Gad. It's like it was weird to me because I was like, they did they do mocap for this? Like. <laughs> Like, like, did they just I, give him like facial was, expressions? Because I, I mean, I can kind of see when it. I was reading the credits. It's like, that was Josh Gad. That, that could have been anyone. How is that Josh Gad? It's like, that could have been anyone. Um, but then I looked at his face and I was like, uh, yeah, kind of does look like him. <laughs> not in a bad way, no disrespect, but no, like, not, not it does. Way. There's something, there's something about his face that was like, you know, in hindsight, it kind of does look a little bit like him. Yeah. <laughs> I could see it a little bit, maybe. Yeah. Um, and uh, we do get the Stay Puffs, but we get many Stay Puff marshmallows, which, oh, and you're so cute. It's like, I want to I want to pinch them, but you can't. They're going to bite your finger because they bit Paul Rudd's uh, finger in that scene. Um, mm-hmm. They just they just added, they just acted like, you know, little kids, like trying to, you know, screw everything like up. Um that's still a good nod to the Stay Puft marshmallows, even though we didn't get the big one. You know, we still get like the like if Stay Puft like had children, this 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 is their this is his children, you know. This is his children, these little guys. Yeah. Um, and literally that that scene in the Walmart is basically them trying to commit suicide, but in a fun way, which is like, why? why this is um you're you're forgetting this is kind of also a kids movie you got kids watching i mean it's sort of like the opposite of the original in terms of like yeah instead of one big giant one a whole bunch of mini ones instead of the humor coming from the fact that it's something really adorable but also really giant that's going to kill us all it's sort of like oh Here's all these little things that look adorable, but they're also really mean and they're kind of rambunctious, sort of like gremlins or critters. Yeah. Yeah. It's well, playing I, the opposite end of the spectrum. I guess that brings us into our question. Who's our favorite, like uh our favorite ghost from any of if you guys it could be any from any of the movies. Yes, including the 2016 version, unfortunately. Yes. That or or the new one. Or the new one. But just just be careful. Don't 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 spoil anything so i'll go first so i was watching i was watching a document uh the movies that netflix is the movies that made us i was watching a documentary yesterday and um slimer has always been my my favorite ghost and he's actually he they based him off of uh john belushi um oh because, of course they know, did Dan, Dan of course like, they make did him look like belushi that's my name make him look like belushi he has to look like belushi so that was always my my favorite ghost, and I think yeah, I had some love for Stay Puft too. Stay Puft was because that was the last villain in the like ghost in the first movie. That was with the whole New York. Yeah, like, they're up there fighting like ghosts, and then and then Wins, you see Winston right after like covered like in marshmallow. Yeah, like, I love this city. Uh, I love this town. That's the last line in the movie. It's great. Uh, I love this town. Oh, I was all, I was close to the game. All right. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Who's your favorite ghost, Josh? Uh, I mean, I have actually been kind of delving more. I mean, if we're going to talk movies, one or at least two that have always really struck a chord with me ever since I was a child. Or, I mean, well, okay, obviously Stay Puft is like, you know, he's he's giant kaiju sailor uh, uh, mar- marshmallow guy. Um, but there's also the terror dogs, which always have, oh, yeah. you know, there's all the Vince Clortho and Zool have always kind of just kind of stuck in the back of my mind just because of the, oh, the sort of... Go motion effects that Phil Tippett, I think it was Phil Tippett who did and them. That, the first that was movie. actually what's interesting is when Sigourney Weaver was auditioning, that was her idea of what she wanted to do for the, I think, for the first movie. It was like, the, he's a genius if that's the case because holy crap, props, props <laughs> that was so good for, for like for thinking of that. And uh, I would like to thank her for permanently uh, imbuing this, you know, the image of 
those two in my mind because they've always kind of, I've always had that lasting impression of like just seeing the two of them, you know, turning into the key master and gatekeeper, right. you know, dog monsters respectfully. And just like, just seeing that image in my mind has always been like, you know, I mean, simultaneously, it's like, it's one of those like, oh, I'm terrified, but it's also really badass kind of a simultaneous right. you know, moment yeah. thing. There's also so many other ghosts I could go into. Like, there's some from the real Ghostbusters animated show that most people don't even know about. Like, I'm sure, I'm sure they'll find it after this movie if they're if they're looking at Ghostbusters and they're looking under. I'm sure they'll, I'm sure they'll find it if people forget. Yeah, can you imagine if they had like a movie that was like Cthulhu based off of like an episode from the show, like you know, because he had the Cult of Cthulhu episode and be like. You could totally do that with a movie. <laughs> yeah. So time time to rate Ghostbusters Afterlife. And I gotta tell you, I like this better than Ghostbusters 2016. They should have just released well, yeah. they should have just released this instead of Ghostbusters 2016, to be honest. Because we we didn't need we didn't need that. Yeah. So that, well, yeah. that is like we didn't need that. Although I kind I kind of like it. I kind of like the idea that Fall Out Boy did their own, you know, rem, redemption of like the Ghostbusters theme song. I still kind of like the idea, but still, it's not a good movie. Okay, it's not not the yeah. best Ghostbusters movie, but this this one's there. So what I rank it is, I give Ghostbusters Afterlife a nine out of ten because. Well, it was a my mom was right. It's a little bit slow in the beginning, but hey, we, we got to introduce like all the new characters and you know that they're you know that that they're still shining their light to the OGs. But it, it's it, yeah. it was so good. All, all the scenes, even the the Ecto one, even the scene with like the OG weapons, even we get new gadgets in the movie that they introduce. The new ghosts are, are good. Stay puffed, like many marshmallows are are good. Even that last that last moment, which I'm not gonna. Which I'm not gonna say with the with the OG Ghostbusters, they they really they put a hell of a show in this movie. It's like and seeing it in 40x was was really good. We saw it in 40x and it it was good. Nine nine out of ten. That's my rating. Josh, what what do you rate it? Yeah, I mean this one was really tough because there was so much I liked about it. My only real gripe was just the fact that it took so many cues from the first movie. I was like, okay, so there's this and there's this, and I was like, okay, could have done something different. But at the same yeah. time, I was like, well, this is more so a tribute than anything else because I mean, I guess by the end of it, it kind of makes up for it with number one, the emotional connectivity and tension, and number two, the final moments where they actually kind of allude to the future actually building you know the idea that they could build upon something even they're bigger looking, looking into, the into the future so i was like you know okay so i would have to give it somewhere around like maybe an 8.5 because okay. i mean this was a, this was a great like Again, it was a nice tribute to Harold. It was a yeah. It was a solid story. It was imperfect, but it was very solid. And like there were enough there's enough decent acting and there's enough uh to keep you from being like, you know, I'm totally not in that. It's enough to keep you invested and it's enough to keep you wanting more and at least hoping for more in the future, you know, they do decide to make something even, you know, a sequel or not, something a like sequel that. Or I'm, I've been reading maybe a, a series, possibly a series could possibly happen. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I know that Ron Tomatoes, they still have their score of this movie at 62, but look, look at the audience score 95. That is so much better than the Ron Tomatoes score. It's like the audience like has spoken more than like the critics for this movie. I feel like, I feel like the score, like for this, it's like, no, it's like, so Ghostbusters 2016, they, they were at 70s. Like that should be this movie's score. And 2016, 
should be this score right like right now for afterlife that should be their score it's like just switch the scores you know switch the scores yeah Yeah, i i felt like this this movie it was it was good i felt like this Rotten Tomato score should have like just went to 70 and just stayed like in the 70 range Mm -hmm. um i feel like the critics I mean, at least some of them are too too harsh. Like they took a stab, like with the Eternals, you know, Eternals. Still. You say that's usually how this goes. Usually the critics are like, yeah, yeah, this is super harsh, and then the audience is just like, oh, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah, usually this, how it this goes. Is a, this is a triumph of cinema, you know. All right, so before before we close this video off, I I want I want to do something, Josh. Um, oh. We're gonna. I'm gonna take you guys back to November nineteenth uh, of this year. Well, it's it's kind of, kind of Saturday because it was it was midnight because we when we went to see this this movie let out like at midnight mm-hmm. around, around that time. So I'm taking you back opening day of Ghostbusters After Life. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> even our even our friend Isaac, who is also in my Eternals review, he he has his um reaction when he got out of this too so yeah thank you back to the the past or back to last week so hope you enjoy all right so this is a this is a cut to got out of ghostbusters after life it is like yeah it's one o'clock it, it is one o'clock uh yeah and so isaac working <laughs> yes I still want to include you in the review. What What'd you think? It was fun. Uh, it was a lot of fan service, but it was we saw him, We saw him in 40X. So. That's me. <laughs> uh, that's him. <laughs> you are 40X, uh, my guy. <laughs> Josh, would you like to say anything else, even though you, you kind of, I think you kind of already said some things. I mean, I like, because I understand, like, cause there's a lot of people who are like, yeah, it's got a lot of fan service in it. But, like, I think of all the movies that I've seen that have fan service in them, I think this one was probably done the classiest, and at least in the most, I want to say respectful way, mm-hmm. because at least it, you know, it serves as a loving tribute more than it is just like a fan pandering thing. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I thought I thought it was great. It's a great, like, tribute for old Ghostbusters fans and probably a new generation of Ghostbusters fans. Mm. Yeah. All right. We're done here, and I'll see you guys. Uh, and now the, I'll end the video then. Okay, thank you, thank you, pass us. And it, yeah, that's that's ba- that's basically this review. Yeah, right. I don't I don't know how long this review is gonna be in an ending, but I guess I'll see that myself. Well, thank again, thanks, thank you guys for watching. Um, Please subscribe to my channel if you're going to answer the call. Like, favorite, share, hit the bell so you know when I have new videos up. And all right, this is the time where I'm going to like plug my videos out. Go check out my Spider Man No Way Home trailer to reaction. And I will also make a video where Josh and I are going to break down the, tr- uh, the second trailer because there is. The mm-hmm. things to talk about, and uh, no, it's not. Uh, we're not gonna try and talk about Toby and Andrew because we want you. We want you guys to just you know stop, stop thinking that, and just enjoy Spider Man No Way Home, just how it is. We don't need Toby and Andrew for that movie. I'm telling you guys, we don't need Toby and Andrew. Tom Holland is fine on his own. You know, he's fine. You know, we have the Raimi villains and the other villains. Just be grateful with that. Um. And also, I unboxed this not not too long ago, so go go check that out too. And uh, and yes, my hair is starting to look like this now. Um, and until No Way Home comes out, until Josh and I and a couple of our other friends see Spider-Man No Way Home, my hair style will be will be this. It'll try to be. Um, and what else? Uh, oh, Clifford Big Red, Big Red Dog. Still need to review that and. Free Guy and Ron's Gone Wrong, which is actually coming soon next month to, to Disney Plus, which I did not know that it's going to be on Disney Plus, but I guess I guess it is because hmm. you know it's also Fox, but kind of Disney, but it's Locksmith. So 
yeah, and I uh, also going to do a review for Dune, uh, Tick, Tick, Boom with Andrew Garfield. Um, I got some other reaction videos. Josh and I are going to start reviewing Hawkeye uh, this, this Wednesday, the first two episodes, but they will be separate videos. They all will be separate videos. Um, and also need to review my spider bots and my web tech web shooter and uh turning red reaction i still need to do that i'm behind on reactions too um and yeah don't forget to subscribe to josh my brother josh he's finally has his army of the dead reaction and we have our collab of react not reacting but ranking movies which we need mm -hmm. to add eternals now since that's that's yeah. out mm -hmm. yeah so I'll, I'll yeah we're gonna do that don't I'll, and I'll send it to you, Josh. I'll finally listen. We gotta add Eternals now. Um, and any, anything else, Josh? Uh, you want to? Not I know of. Not right. at the moment. I'm. I'm still. I'll get more ideas as I go along. Maybe this week. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah. Maybe this week. I have no idea. Yeah. All right. Anyway. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe if you're new here, and I'll see you in the future. Peace, and don't forget to rock on. And uh, I just got my booster shot not too long ago, so think think about think about doing that. Get back, get vaccinated. I hope you guys are having a good day. We're saying good vibes, and um, I guess you'll see Josh and I when we start. Talking about the Hawkeye episodes, which is not not too long of a wait anymore, since we're 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 almost we're almost there. We just have two two more days, you know. Whenever this video, actually, this video is going to come out on the twenty second Monday. Yeah, no premiere, but yeah. All right, we're gonna do other stuff now. Enjoy my other videos. I have on my YouTube channel, and yeah, we'll see you once Hawkeye comes out. All right, bye guys. Later.